Hello everyone and welcome to another installment by Paradise Arcade Shop. I am donning my Joust t-shirt today in celebration of the latest acquisition. I had to actually fly to another island to get this one. But what I wanted to show you um, today is our trackballs. Now, I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to show you on the inside. And I don't have another arcade trackball right here, so uh, I can't show you the differences. But these are actually relatively easy. These are the ones that light up. They are green unless you connect the uh, buttons. They're a PS2 trackball. And all you got to do is pop the sides up here. So you just kind of crank these little plastic tabs up. And uh, there we go. And you'll see the top comes right off. So we'll put that over here. I wanted to show you the inside of this trackball. Take the trackball out. It's a nice crystal trackball. And then what you have are you have your rollers. Now uh, on this device, so if you've, if you've seen the inside of an arcade trackball, it's somewhat similar except these rollers are much more heavy duty. This is a $30 trackball. It's a $30 lit trackball. It's not a uh, super expensive one. If you'll notice, the wheels here are plastic. They have a, a tight resolution so they can be used like a mouse. And the ball will spin on this surface. So it's a nice, you know, you get more than just a, you get more than just going as far as you push it. If you give a good wind up, it'll actually keep spinning. So it is nice like that, but it's not the industrial strength um, arcade, you know, level of trackball. It's a great thing for people getting into MAME for the first time, want to try something out. The mounting holes are not a standard mounting hole pattern from an arcade trackball, but they're very close. Um, and, you know, we've had some great luck with this, and a lot of people really love this. I was hesitant to sell it at first, so I was worried that people weren't going to be happy with something that didn't have the solid steel shafts, but, you know, it's been a lot of fun. Now, the other thing that's been a lot of fun, and been a, a, a lot of fun, is modding this. And we just figured out this, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but you can see I pulled the ball out. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to yank, and you can probably hear the dogs in the background. I'm just going to yank this inner board out. So we'll uh, get set up here. We'll just take out, sorry, a little pocket knife instead of a screwdriver, but works just the same. So there's three screws on the inside here, and they hold the black uh, tray that is used for the rollers. So we'll just unscrew that in the four spots, or three spots, sorry. There we go. And now this tray, let's see if we got them all. Oh, we got to loosen this one a little more. Make sure you don't lose the screws. It's always an issue. One more turn over here. There we go. So. You take your black tray out and just set that to the side. I'm working on a piece of styrofoam, kind of makes it easy, things don't slide around too much. And then what you'll see is you just have your circuit board. Now, <coughs> you can just pop this out. It's actually not held in by anything at this point. The black tray is what held it. We'll put this to the side. And these are your LEDs down here on the bottom. So you can see um, that's basically what lights up your trackball. Now, it's actually conveniently labeled for you. You have green on this side and red on this side. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to go and take some of our other LEDs and we're going to change how this lights up. <clears throat> so what I thought I'd do is I've got some blue LEDs. I'll put two of those there. And I've got some pink LEDs here. I don't know why we're doing blue and pink. Maybe it's just celebration of Easter coming up. So, what you want to do is, if you look at the LEDs down on the board, they're about a quarter inch long lead, and then the leads are bent. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to bend it. And one thing you need to pay attention to is your anode and your cathode. So I, the thing that I would suggest doing is if you look at the structure inside the LED up close, you can actually see which side is the anode and which is the cathode. So what you want to do is just match the structures inside to the structures you see in those LEDs. So I'm noticing that it's like this. So in this case, my positive lead is on the left and my negative lead is on the right. I would highly suggest that you just take a look at the LEDs and match. You'll see the little triangles and structures inside. The problem is if I tell you left or right and then you turn it around, <clears throat> it's not going to match up for you. 
Now these leads don't need to be very long. You can clip them off so they're 3 16 to an eighth inch. So there's the blues, and I'm just going to stick that in the styrofoam, make it easy to hold on to. Whoops. Same thing here. Just snip. You don't want them too long. If they're too long, then the board won't fit into the device. So there's my blues. Here's my pinks. Now remember, because you looked at the inside there and lined everything up, they should be oriented properly when you put them into the board. There's really only one way to do it because you bent it one way. So now we've got all those bent. The next step is going to be removing these. So I've got my soldering iron all heated up. And for those of you that have done uh, soldering before, usually if you add a little bit of solder to your, uh, to your spot, you can get it good and hot. Handy solder sucker. If you don't have this, you can use the cheating method, which is going down and uh, just doing a little bit on each side, a little bit at a time, and inching that back out. But you know, uh, if you do that, you do risk disturbing the traces on the board. So, um, just so you know, we're not going to be doing this mod for people. Um, this is something that you'd have to do on your own. But we will be providing the LEDs uh, on request. So if you want, you can see actually the one LED just completely fell out. Um, the solder sucker is, I don't know, a couple of bucks at uh, Radio Shack. It's actually pretty cheap. Very reasonably priced item. So that was our red side. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this last one out there. And I'm going to take my pink LEDs and I'm just going to stick them back in those holes. So if you look, just make sure that the matches it matches with height. That's pretty close. So we'll do one at a time. They kind of hang in there a little bit. So we'll just add a dab here. Make sure when you solder that you get both of your pads hot enough to take the solder. If you only get one side hot enough, you'll get a cold solder, and that's more likely to crack. It doesn't form as good of a electrical connection. So you really want to get the lead hot as well as the uh, pad hot. So there's my first pink one. We'll grab the other one here. You can kind of play with it a little bit, get it angled so that it stays in there, and then bend it into place and when you're done. As I said, these LEDs are, um, we have a quite a stockpile of these. So uh, if you buy a trackball and you'd like to do this mod, uh, just let us know and we'll be happy to include whatever color LEDs you'd like. Um, if you don't buy a trackball, please don't ask us for a free LEDs. So we're going to slide the blues in now. I'm going to do one at a time. I'm going to keep this easy. Now, if your leads are a little long underneath, that's okay. You can actually just not clip them ahead of time, but I find it's easier to clip them ahead of time. You can always go back and snip them uh, after you've put them in, and we'll do that just to trim these up and make them nice and flush. All done. Simple mod. So we'll come across here with the wire snips and just let the dikes and get them cleaned up. Make sure none of your traces touch. Um, that could be a problem, so don't use too much solder. You really want to be delicate with this. This isn't a hard thing to solder, actually. It's pretty easy. Now I'm going to just push my LEDs down against the board. Um, this one's off a little to one side. That really shouldn't matter too much. If you look, there you go. So we've replaced them. And all you have to do is take your box, stick the board back down in there, get the wires up out of the way. The wire path is pretty obvious. It's just around the edge and then out the bottom. So you've got one wire that goes to your PS2 connection. That's where your power for the LEDs comes from. And you've got another wire, and that goes around and comes out, and that's your mouse buttons. Now, if you're trying to hook this up to a main machine, it's pretty straightforward. You just hook it up um, straight to the mouse port and tell the main device that it's a mouse. Uh, if you're trying to do a, a uh, some other type of arcade machine, you've got to remember that uh, this is a USB mouse or a PS2 mouse. It's not a typical arcade trackball. Just double check and make sure that your uh, rollers are lined up so they're through the bridges. We'll grab our screwdriver again, our handy dandy pocket knife. 
Sorry, I just don't feel like getting up and going getting a screwdriver right now. I'm tighten this back down. Drop the ball in, then all we have to do is just make sure we snap this back on. Get both sides. Excellent. And we're ready to go. Why don't we take this inside and see what it looks like. Okay, so here you can kind of see the difference between the two track balls. This is the green one, the traditional one, and this is the blue one. This is not the one we just made. We'll show you that one in a second, but when you hit the green, it turns red. This one is actually one that we did before for somebody, and when you hit this one, so the blue turns red, and you can kind of see the color difference there. So let's get these out of the way. Now you can see the, the new blue one that we just built. And what you've got here, uh, we can do blue. And then when you activate one of the buttons, it goes pink. So you can do that mod on any one of these trackballs. We have white, orange, yellow, green, blue, pink. Um, you know, if you're doing like a Miss Pac-Man modification, that might be a fun little combo. So anyways, if you have any questions, just let us know. Again, this is Brian at ParadiseArcadeShop.com. You can reach me at Brian at ParadiseArcadeShop.com or Sales at ParadiseArcadeShop.com. Take care and have a great night.